What is going on everybody and welcome back to Mad Detailing. Today's video is on this 1996 Toyota Chaser and it wasn't up until September of 2021 that we were able to import these vehicles into the States. So that's exactly what happened to this one. But when this vehicle arrived, it has sat at a body shop for the last six months, hence why it's absolutely covered in dust. But in today's video, we are gonna be restoring this iconic JZX100 back to its show car condition. So if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. I post brand new videos every Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and roll these before shots and get right into this Toyota Chaser Detail. And after getting all the dust removed, it's time to move on to cleaning these wheels. And for this, I'm using our Extreme APC on the tires and fender wells. And for the wheels, I'm using our Mad Detailing Iron Racer along with multiple different brushes so I can make sure I get every inch of this wheel and tire 100% clean.
moving on to washing the vehicle, we are foaming down the entire car right now with our mad detailing super blue soap in a foam cannon. And then we'll use a soft detail brush to get in all the emblems and the grill. Then we will spray the vehicle off before foaming the vehicle down again, and then giving the vehicle a nice hand wash with a soft microfiber wash mitt. first step in the decontamination of this car is going to be our matte detailing iron eraser and that's going to move a lot of the iron buildup and brake dust that is inside the clear coat and then we will be following that up with our matte detailing clay loop and a synthetic clay bar and that will make sure we remove all the deeply embedded contamination that is inside of this clear coat.
Besides a couple stains on the carpet, this interior is in really good condition. And there's also a nice change from the nasty disasters we've done recently. After giving the carpet a nice thorough vacuum, it's time to move on to this carpet extraction. For this, we're using our Mad Clean, a drill brush with a drill brush attachment. And for the extractor, I'm using my Mighty HP60 hot water extractor. And if you guys are wondering why I'm using my Mad Clean instead of our Extreme APC, that's because the Mad Clean is actually a safer formula. And since this vehicle is extremely old and I don't want to cause any fading or anything like that, I went ahead and went with the mad clean and honestly i probably could have used extreme apc i don't think it would have caused any damages because i've never seen it cause damage like that before but since this isn't like an imported car and it's extremely hard to find carpet or any type of replacement panels it was not worth the risk so that's why i went ahead and went with our mad clean And the interior panels of this vehicle just needed a very light clean. So we're using our Mad Detailing Leather Cleaner, which also acts as a multi-purpose cleaner and can be used on every surface on the interior.
So the product that I'm using now is our ceramic interior detailer. And this is by far one of my favorite products when it comes to protecting your interior surfaces. It leaves behind such a nice finish. It is not too shiny, but it's not too matte. It's just a brand new feel. And the product smells absolutely amazing. So I definitely recommend trying out this product if you guys haven't already. And if you guys would like to try out any of our products, you guys can head on down to www.maddetailingusa.com. I'll also have the link in the description below. And I'll also have a coupon code for you guys to save 20% off your entire order. And after Scoot 30 is over, it's time to assess the paint and get on to paint correcting this vehicle. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of wet sand scratches and a lot of heavy scratches throughout this entire vehicle. This vehicle is not OEM paint, so it has been repainted. And honestly, the body shop that painted this car did a very good job, but it is nowhere near a show car finish. So that is exactly what we're doing here. We're using our Rupes 15 polisher with a microfiber cutting pad. And for the compound, we're using Sonex Ultimate Cut. We're gonna use this to cut the entire vehicle. And then we are finishing it out with a Rupes 21 inch polisher, 21 inch. No, we're using a Rupes 21 polisher with a red polishing pad and Sonex Perfect Finish. And also I normally don't film it just because it takes a lot of time moving the camera around, but after every single pass, I am blowing out my pad with compressed air. And you always wanna do that because if you don't, your pad will get gunked up with all types of paint residue and it just won't cut anymore. So yeah, anytime you're doing paint correction, compressed air is 100% needed. And also I'm switching my pad out probably every other panel with a brand new pad or a clean pad, either or. But yeah, anytime you're doing any type of paint correction, you always want to have compressed air and multiple pads handy.
So the rear bumper of this vehicle was absolutely hammered. So I reached for old reliable and that is our DeWalt polisher with a wool cutting pad.
After getting this vehicle fully corrected, it is now time to move on to prepping this paint for a ceramic coating. So first step in that is using a prep spray and it's pretty much an alcohol-based spray. It is going to remove all the waxes and grease left behind and get the surface 100% clean and ready for a ceramic coating. When applying ceramic coating, you always want to work in a cross hatching pattern, just like when you're polishing a vehicle. And the flash time is going to depend on what ceramic coating you're using, what environment you're working on. Is it humid? Is it not humid? So on. So as you guys see in this frame right here, you can actually see the rainbow effect. And that means that the coating is now flashing and it is time to wipe it off. And I always recommend using two towels when wiping off the ceramic coating and always have a nice handy light on hand because you don't want to leave behind high spots because they are not fun to remove. And it's just not very professional to give a customer a vehicle back with high spots. So yeah, always have a good light source when you're applying ceramic coating.
Thank you.